you're carrying out this course because you use IT as part of your job. As such, it is vital you're aware of the security implications associated with using such equipment. Should you have accessibility issues, all text can be read by a screen reader, and the text is vocalized by the presenter or voiceover in most cases. Welcome to the eLearning WMB eLearning course on IT security. This course covers the following issues. What are the threats from hackers? How to create secure passwords? Threats from malware and emails? Antivirus software, what it does and how to use it? And social networking. The course will last 60 minutes and there'll be a quiz at the end to test your knowledge. Most people understand their department and know how to use their tools to get their tasks done, but are isolated and unaware of security issues all around them. The weakest link in most security programs is people. To be part of the process and not part of the problem, you need to be knowledgeable and aware of types of security issues and incidences that may arise. The role human behavior plays in IT security. And policy and best practice to keep our data safe. Hackers, malicious insiders and others want to steal that data and use it for their own advantage. Drag with your mouse to turn the next page or press the button at the side of the page to learn how. Data flows across networks every day, including passwords, private personal information, personal records, email messages, financial documents, and more. By default, data that flows across the network is not protected. A hacker can tap into a network using a wireless device. This is known as war driving war biking or war walking depending on the hacker's transportation. Open networks are very easy to find with maps readily available online. A hacker can visit any of these wireless hotspots and gain access to a network. Once done, they will have access to your personal and company data. Secure your wireless network. You can prevent this by making sure the wireless network you use is secure. Your operating system will tell you if the wireless network is secured or not. Remember, you should not connect to an insecure network because the data you send out could be available to anyone around you. There are several things you should be aware of concerning password security. Written down or stored. Passwords are often written down by users who have trouble remembering them. Passwords are also increasingly stored electronically on mobile phones. Do not leave passwords stored anywhere for others to find. Social engineering and phishing scams. These scams can trick a user to disclose the password just by asking the password in some way. For instance, a so-called help desk person calling. Key logging. Passwords can be intercepted by keyloggers that record the keystrokes you make using software installed on your computer, or even with hardware, for instance, false keypads over ATMs. Shoulder surfing. Passwords can be recognized by somebody watching you type it on your keyboard, aka shoulder surfing. Always try to keep your password masked when entering it. Cracking. Passwords can be cracked, especially if they are short. Guessing. Passwords can be guessed. For instance, if no strong password policy is enforced. We should talk about remembering passwords later. Sniffing. Passwords can be sniffed. Intercepted when in transit between a PC and a server. For instance, on the internet. Resetting. Passwords can be reset which is often easier than cracking a password. You should not include personal information in your password, such as your birthday, 
the name of your dog, favourite sports team, etc. Use as many characters as possible. The longer the password, the harder it is to crack. A collection of different words are better than a single word password. Do not use dictionary words in any language. Do not use easily guessed patterns, 1234, 1 BCD, QWERTY, etc. Use a mix of upper and lower case letters, numbers and special characters and change your password as often as possible. Click below to find out which characteristics passwords must have. Password length, minimum seven characters long. Longer is better. Alphanumeric, must contain at least two of the following. Lowercase letters, ABC, uppercase letters, ABC, and numbers, one, two, three. Other characters can also include for extra security non-alphanumeric symbols, for instance, exclamation mark, dollar sign, etc. And Unicode characters, alt, keyboard combinations. Not your name, etc. It should not contain parts of your user ID or name. No repetition. You should not repeat any of your previous passwords. Hackers are now using computer power that can try literally millions of password combinations to hack into your systems every second. In addition, single sign-on procedures and password safes are now commonplace that enable users to create long and complex passwords and not have to type them in every time. For this reason, we need to look at how we can make our passwords as complex as possible while still remembering them. You may have already your own system for doing this, but this system has been shown to work as it is the same system memory acts use to remember a pack of cards in a minute, etc. Visualization. Firstly, we're going to take three random objects, a chicken, a blowtorch, and a pillow, and then a random two-digit number, 76. Linking. Now we're going to visualize a scene which links all these objects. The objects chosen in the scene you create in your mind can be whatever you wish to choose. The important thing is to make it as silly as possible. The scene we have chosen is a chicken which has a blowtorch in his hands and is setting the pillow alight. What about the 76? Well, we know the song 76 trombones, so we envisage the smoke rising and making a trombone play, which links our mind to the 76. Putting this together, all we now need in order to remember the password is to envisage the scene. This may be the password to your email, so now let's imagine millions of emails coming out of those trombones. Now we can add other characters to your password. Add capital letters and the numbers at a consistent location across all your passwords. E.g. at the start of the first and last word and put the number at the end. Finally we can add a personal rule to add the first vowel in your password to a random character. For instance an at sign. Now we have a password that is almost impossible to guess. And forget. Remember to create your own rules and own scenes. The more outlandish, the better. The changes to the web in the last 10 years have served to save time, enhance creativity and allow collaboration among users. But it also comes with new risks, threats and fraud. Your online banking or credit funds can be stolen from you or our customers. Your digital identity can be stolen and your credit can be ruined. Malicious software can be installed on your system without your knowledge. You could give away sensitive information or your company's trade secrets as the data could get into the wrong hands. You could cause your company to be negatively affected, sued, endure regulatory fines, criminal charges, experience loss of trust and reputation, business losses, etc. Malware can gain remote access to your system, thus allowing data to be sent to the hacker and further infect others through disabling antivirus and firewall software. Click below to find out more. Viruses. 
A virus is a malicious computer program that can copy itself and infect a computer by corrupting or modifying files. It does this without permission or knowledge of the user. A virus replicates itself by attaching to another object, e.g. Uh, via email attachments, internet downloads, USB sticks, SD cards, etc. Worms. A malicious computer program like a virus, but a worm can spread itself without any user interaction. Usually more dangerous than a virus, as they can cause harm to the network. Worms are also invisible to the user. Trojan horses. These are delivery vehicles for malicious or destructive computer programs, similar to viruses or worms. Hackers, virus writers and even advertisers can embed malicious code into any program or file that appears to be harmless or useful, such as an animation or video game. Adware. Adware stands for Advertising Supported Software. It refers to any software that automatically plays, displays or downloads advertisements. These adverts are seen after software is installed on the computer or while the application is being used. Spyware. Spyware is software that is used to gather information about a person or organization without their knowledge. Spyware displays advertisements related to what it finds from spying on you. This is called targeted advertising. Phishing. An email that masquerades as a legitimate contact from a business or organization in an attempt to steal personal financial information is called phishing. Phishing often states that there is a problem or threatens to terminate an account if you do not respond. Farming. Farming is an attack in which a user can be fooled into entering sensitive data, such as a password or credit card number, into a malicious website that impersonates a legitimate website. The attacker does not have to rely on having the user click on a link in an email. Even if the user correctly enters a URL web address into a browser's address bar, the attacker can still redirect the user to a malicious website. Spam Spam is unsolicited email on the internet. In almost all cases, the sender's address is spoofed, i.e. it pretends to be from a legitimate sender. Spam is a common carrier of malicious code. Difficult to stop completely without stopping a valid mail from time to time. Ransomware. This is a type of virus that threatens to publish the victim's data or perpetually block access to the computer unless a ransom is paid via hidden payments using the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. These attacks can occur by clicking on email attachments or even spread automatically from computer to computer without any human interaction. Recent high-profile cases have included the WannaCry cyber attack, which attacked computers worldwide, causing major interruptions to the UK's National Health Service, etc. Antivirus software. Regardless of the type of antivirus software running on your PC, it should have the following characteristics. It will have an antivirus detector that continuously monitors your system, an email scanner that detects viruses in incoming emails, and an update manager which ensures your virus database is up to date. The antivirus software will scan your computer periodically. If you are worried that your computer might be affected by a virus, then scan the PC immediately. Similarly, the virus database will be periodically updated. If you are aware of a new virus that is affecting machines, you should select to update the database immediately. Do not permit activities which can distribute viruses, such as peer-to-peer -peer file sharing from your computer. Also scan all new files, such as those on CDs, DVDs, USB drives, flash memory sticks and diskettes. Your operating system will also have measures to protect your PC and may even have its own integrated antivirus system, for instance Windows Defender. IT staff automatically distributes patches for you. When connected to the internet, choose Install Updates and Shut Down to have patches automatically installed. Remember these golden rules surrounding email. Never open unfamiliar RE emails. The email could contain a virus attachment or a link to a phishing website. Do not put your email on the web, for instance Facebook, Twitter, etc. Your email is often used as a username and advertising it will attract spam. Do not use free mailboxes for work emails, such as Hotmail or Yahoo. These are designed for social use 
and are not as secure. Ignore chain letters and money making schemes. These are always designed to waste time and extort money. Be wary of replying to spam messages or clicking unsubscribe. Replying will confirm to the spammer that your email is valid. Never send personal or financial data via email. A financial institution will never ask for such information in this way. Never click on any link from any person or persons you do not recognize. This could be a farming attack where the hacker is looking to steal your personal details. If you are concerned about an email, contact your IT department to investigate the legitimacy. Social networking has changed the way we interact with friends and associates. While social networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Google Plus play a significant role in our lives, they are also a high risk for security threats. With hundreds of millions of users online, these tools not only attract friends and family wanting to stay in touch, but they also attract people wanting to know about you for the wrong reasons. Be aware of the top five security threats currently out there to help you stay safe online. Number one, having your identity stolen. Identity thieves gather personal information from social media sites. Even if you have your account on the highest security settings, there are still ways for an identity thief to get your information. It's common for them to hack an email account by using social information. Once the thief has access to your email account, then they have access to all information on your social networking sites. So what can you do to protect yourself? You don't have to delete all your social profiles or hide from the real world. Just take these precautions. Have a strong password. Don't reveal your location. Use a fake location or leave it blank. And be careful with your status updates. For example, you may post, Happy birthday to my mother, and then tag her profile in the post. Now the thief knows your answer to the most commonly used security question. Number two, getting your social profile hacked. Hackers love social networking, going right to the source to interject malicious code. The codes that hackers use can steal your identity, inject viruses to your computer, and abstract bank account information. The best advice is to never click on a link until you are sure the source. To tell if a link is safe, you can hover over the link. If you hover over a link without clicking, you'll see the full URL in the lower corner of your browser. If you don't recognize it, don't enter it. Try a link scanner. A link scanner is a website that lets you enter the URL of a link you suspect might be suspicious to check for safety. Try URL void or my what as possible options. And check shortened links. A shortened link is popular on sites like Twitter, where character length matters. Some shortened link sites include bit.ly and tinyurl. Use a service like Securi to determine if the real link is secure. Number 3. Inadvertently letting stalkers find you. When you use social networking sites, you are posting personal information which is now public and can be used to harm you. Every time you browse a website, companies can put invisible markers on your computer called cookies which tracks your activity as you move from site to site. To keep sites from tracking your activity, click on the Do Not Track feature. Most websites have an option for you to opt out of tracking. You should also clear the cache and cookies on your browser regularly to help prevent any problems. Number 4. Letting burglars know your whereabouts. Telling the online world where you are going and when you aren't at home is inviting burglars to your house. By telling the world you're on vacation in Europe, you're letting potential thieves know that you are far away, how long you'll be gone, and where you live. Burglars are fond of constant updates, especially about your travel plans. You wouldn't stand up in the middle of a crowd and announce that your house will be empty for the next week. Well, that's what you do when you post your vacation pictures and plans online. When you go on vacation, Avoid posting travel plans like when, where, or for how long you're going. Wait until you're home to post pictures to a vacation album. And use the highest privacy control. Only let certain groups like family view your photos. 
Be selective with the status updates. You can use an audience selector drop down menu on Facebook to choose certain groups to see your status updates. Never choose friends of friends as this will share with 100 times more people than just your friends, most of whom you don't know. And stay offline if you can. Relax and forget about the online world for a few days. Number five, becoming overconfident. Many users believe as long as they have a firewall and an antivirus installed, there is no threat to security, or that they don't have anything to worth hacking, so there's no need to worry about security. With today's technology, we are more connected to each other than ever before. When you neglect security, you not only put yourself at risk, but others in your life too. To keep yourself and your information safe, pay careful attention to your online activity. Avoid posting information including travel plans, bank account information, your full address and birth date, your children's names, school and birth dates, local information such as the name of your workplace and your daily schedule. Please answer the questions and pass the quiz in order to continue. In this e-learning we have covered what are threats from hackers, how to create secure passwords, threats from malware and emails, antivirus software, what it does and how to use it. Remember, it is up to you to protect yourself. It is under your direct control whether our IT security is compromised. If you need to review any of the topics covered in this e-learning, please click on the menu below.